Welcome gamers, Stone Monk here, repping the Mortal Realms crew. Another uh, preview is dropped on the Warhammer community page today. Um, and this time it's the Legion of Blood. Led and uh, kind of, um, uh, what is it, held, <laughs> held tightly by Neferata, the Mortark of Blood. Um, and, uh, you know, what it talks about here is that the Legion of Blood are the elite. They're the spies and the ins insurgents of, uh, of Nagash. And, and similar, maybe even to like um, Zinch coming in and corrupting a place, a city or whatever, the Soul Blight curse can come upon a whole city and, and turn them into a legion of vampires. So that's pretty awesome. And I would assume not all vampires are created equal. So it would be really cool to get a sense of what kind of lower level civilization of vampires is like. But um, what's great about this is that uh, there are those that rise to the top and there's those that become the favored of Neferata. And uh, one of the things they share with us is that the favored retainers they add one to the melee attack characteristic of Vampire Lords and Blood Knights in the Legion of Blood. Now, um, you know, Vampire Lords, usually on heroes, adding one more uh, attack is interesting. Um, it's all right. Uh, but look at those Blood Knights. Now, we've had a, we know we were getting a little bit of a hit in that Blood Knights no longer regenerate one model uh, per hero phase. Um, and they don't have anything at this point that lets them heal or regain heal wounds or regain models. And so um, they can sometimes be uh, a glass hammer in that they, they go in and they hit, and if uh, they get taken out in, in, in return attacks, then their effectiveness is reduced. But adding that one more attack on top of this means that when they're going in in their first, um, they're going to just have a lot more punch. Uh, they're going to be less likely to, to take hits back, etc. So this just makes them a little bit more um, scary, in fact. Um, and there's a number of things that I think we're going to, are going to stack up. And what they say is this is going to be this is the most elite of all the Death Armies under Neferata. There's going to be synergies galore. Um, there's a couple of interesting um, artifacts uh, that they talk about. The Amulet of Screams. This is basically uh, let's a uh, wizard. Uh, unbind a spell on a two-up. Um, so it's, you know, remember the old, uh, there was a scroll that lets you kind of, um, artifact that would let you just uh, unbind a spell back in back in eight. Um, this is on a two-up, so there's a chance that you're going to fail, um, but it's just one of those where you get to kind of negate some of the enemy's magic. I believe one of the, either the, the tomb, a tomb king or a lich priest has that ability, if you look at their war scrolls, to negate or automatically unbind. Um, so we get a little bit of that. And then the other one, and this one is really cool, the Ring of Dominion. This uh, lets a vampire, or whoever, get into the mind of their enemy, of the um, person they're fighting against, somebody within three inches. And on a five-up, they, they take control of that hero and make them hit themselves with their own weapon. Stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. I could see a, a vampire making that joke very easily uh, when bending somebody's will against themselves. Uh, so this is just a really cool um, item. This is one of those things where it's not going to go off all the time. But, you know, even if it, it happened once per game before your vampire lord dies or your vampire lord and zombie dragon dies, um, I mean, it's just it's just fun, right? Making somebody hit themselves with their own weapon. Um, I think the changeling or one of those each... Uh, Characters has this ability to where basically they can take a um, take a weapon profile and use it against uh, their, their enemy. Um, one more thing, so that's that's all that they give us. They didn't give us as much about uh, the vampires and the blood knights, etc. Doesn't look like we're getting any new blood knight models, um, etc. But they did take in this case the um, the. Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon, and they created a named character in Prince of Vordry. Now, he's part of the, he, he lives in the Crimson Keep, and they say this is kind of like a place that the Blood Knights go back to, to rejuvenate and call home base. Um, but Prince Vordry is stuck there. He's, he's cursed, uh, his, his soul is bound there. Luckily, the fortress moves. Of course it does. Um, and it can come to, to any place. And uh, um, I can't remember what it says. I think in his war scroll it talks a little bit about he's got a certain period of time in which he can leave the, the fortress 
and go and, and wreak havoc. And so what they've done is they've used the um, uh, Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon with the exposed head. Um, and, I, you know, I didn't always love the, this model. Um, partially for my army, I don't use the kind of bat wing or dragon wing motif, so it never was up my alley. Uh, but I, I think he deserves it. He looks really good, and uh, I think he can... Uh, it'll be nice to have another, kind of our, as Tyler Mingo said on Twitter, our first death um, named character since uh, AOS started. So, uh, or the, especially that has a model. Um, now, he seems like he's part of the Legion of Blood, um, so he answers to um, Neferata. Uh, and uh, we'll see what kind of role he plays in, in the book. I'm sure when the, the book comes out, uh, we'll get a lot more on him and uh, what he's all about. Um, here's a little bit of ability here. Um, oh, this is just that he, they suggest that he could fly with at least one other uh, Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon and give them the ability um, to pile in an attack in the hero phase. So, you know, if you're stuck in, it just you know, lets any death hero do uh, either attack or cast a spell. So that's a pretty powerful, um, you know, we've, we've seen some heroes where they let other heroes use their command abilities, and that's a really strong thing. You know, this is pretty strong too. Uh, the, the, the cunning ruck um, from uh, the bone splitters is, is very powerful because it lets them attack or shoot in the hero phase um, in addition to attacking in the, the combat phase. So it's just, there's a couple of ways here that, that the vampires, the elite, are getting to hit harder, hit faster, hit more often um, before they're going to get hit back. And that's that's pretty awesome. So um, next week, or sorry, tomorrow, Friday, <clears throat> we're going to look at, uh, we're going to get a sneak peek of the Legion of the Night. And uh, it talks about, this is with Manfred, and uh, it says Nagash's most potent terror weapon. So I'm expecting some debuffs in bravery. I'm expecting some uh, bravery tests taken out of order, so not in the um, battle shock phase. Um, sorry, so battle shock tests taken outside of the battle shock phase. Um, and uh, you know how is how is that going to be different? It'd be different. Um, I'm hoping. This is my hope. We haven't. And I know the flesh eater courts aren't in this book as a army to play, but. Are the are the um, ghouls and uh, crypt horrors in this book, and is that something that uh, Nagash, sorry, that Manfred would be able to uh, kind of his main force, um, or is it is it zombies? Is it that sort of undead? Um, again, kind of recap: Nagash has kind of the mindless undead. Uh, Death rattle is a big part of that, and the Morgasts, Archon. Uh, is working with the covens of necromancers. Um, Neferata is uh, in command of the elite, the vampires. Uh, so what's left for Manfred? Where's his specialty? He's kind of this cowering in the shadows kind of guy, or at least, you know, duplicitous. So um, we'll, some, for, some ghouls, uh, here's a support for that, because we know that from the fleshy report uh, uh, story, the ghouls are driven in service to the ghoul king because of his cursed blood. And when they drink his blood, they kind of take on his neuroses and his delusions. So if uh, a non-deranged vampire were to lead them, would they become just normal, um, you know, uh, grilly humans eating on uh, the flesh of the dead, cannibals, etc. So, um, and I still go back to that, uh, that audio drama where uh, Nagash, sorry, <laughs> Manfred, went into this uh, city and was able to, to bend the flesh eater, the ghouls to his will and help them out by feeding them some of his blood. So, just an idea. Can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, if you got uh, to a good recap out of this, like the video. Uh, if you want to see more updates uh, on new releases, tomorrow's uh, video on whatever's coming tomorrow from Manfred, or other things that we're doing on the channel like hobby reviews, I'm uh, sorry, hobby updates and, and uh, upcoming Renown and Ruin launch and how to get started with that and help you start a skirmish roleplay campaign with your party. Uh, then subscribe to the channel so you can get updates on that stuff. Um, and uh, 
if you have some ideas on what you think Manfred's uh, uh, kind of Legion of the Night is going to be, leave a comment down below. If you like what's going on with uh, what we've seen in um, with Neferata and the vampires, let me know that down below. Anyway, have a good night. We'll talk to you tomorrow when we see uh, our next preview.